Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be taking a look at an interesting and quirky little card game. This one right here, which in English is called Checkered Combos. This is sort of a trick-taking game. You play cards, the other players will follow that play, you figure out who wins, remove those cards, winner plays a new card, and so on, but it's also kind of a ladder climbing game. Those games in which you are trying to play a better grouping of cards and you are trying to get rid of your whole hand before other players do. It's sort of in between those two things. And uh, there's also some interesting quirks on top of that. One of them, the main one being, you cannot rearrange the cards in your hand. Sound bizarre enough? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. The objective of the game is to be a player still holding some of your black chips when someone has fully run out of them and needs to pay one more. At that point, the game is over. That player or players are going to lose the game. Everyone else is going to be a winner. Each hand is going to be played like this. Everyone is dealt a hand of 10 cards. They are given two of these reserve cards, and at the beginning of the game, everyone gets three of these chips to begin the game. Uh, with five players, everyone would only get two of them, all right? And then you're good to begin. Uh, one major rule in the game that you have to be cautious about is that the cards in your hand cannot be freely organized. So you have to wait till the entire hand of 10 cards has been dealt and then you're going to pick up that hand. You can display it like this, but you cannot reorganize it. So obviously you won't show your cards to anyone. And then you're ready to begin. So we're going to be playing tricks, kind of, meaning playing cards to the center in order to beat the last played card and trying to run our hands of cards out, trying to be out. Because if at any point a player um, cannot play and uh, has to pass and both of these reserve cards are gone, then the hand is over and they lose uh, one of these tokens. Or if we're down to a single player still holding cards in their hand, then they lose and they have to pay a token. So let's say this is our starting player over here, and on my uh, on their turn, they are going to play something to the table, okay? Uh, I could play, for example, a single card. Just that four there. And then they put this hand, you know, put that away, and then this player will go. And they could try to beat that uh, with a better combination. So a better combination of a single card is one single better card, Better than that is two, a two-card run, meaning, uh, say, a seven and an eight. Better than that is a uh, pair, so two eights. Uh, and then even better than that is three cards all at once. First, a three-card run, six, seven, eight. And then the best thing is three of the same kind, say, three elevens. All right? And you can do that. Well, you can play whichever one you want as long as it's better than the last thing. Uh, a major thing to consider is that you can only play cards from your hand that are next to one another. So this player, for example, could play both of these 12s together because they happen to be together in their hand. But if they had this 6 between them, they would want to get rid of that 6 so that now the 12s are together and they could play that set, okay? So that we've got a 4 out there and this player is going to go ahead and play... Uh, a five, which is better than that four. And then this player is going to take a look at their hand here, and they are going to uh, play two fours, which is much better than that. And now it brings their two eights closer together. So that's good. And then this player is going to go. Now, let, now another thing you can do on your turn is instead of playing, either because you don't want to or because you cannot, is you can pick up one of your reserve cards. You can put it anywhere in your hand. So this player might now say, I'm going to pass pick up a card, put it anywhere in their hand here. So they might put it right there next to that nine. And if they can remove that two or that three, then they're gonna have three nines together, which will be quite good. So there we go. The winner of the hand was this player over here. We remove these cards and they lead something new. So they take a look at their hand and they might play that three there, for example. And then this player will go. Unfortunately, they will not be able to get rid of one of those cards they were hoping to let go. But uh, they might play, say, that five there. And this is going to continue with players playing better sets or passing until, like I said, the round is fully over. So uh, this player might play a six, bringing their two ones closer together, right? That's a good thing. 
and then this player will go. And you'll be taking these cards up, putting them anywhere you want in your hand. You've also spotted, likely in the hands, some special cards. These three are special cards. And they are going to do a couple of different things, okay? So for example, this one here, you may choose to play that whenever, you must play it on your own. And whoever wins that hand is going to have to draw three cards into their hand, one at a time, and place them anywhere they want to in that hand. The X here is a wild card, and so it can take on any number you'd like. So if I played it together with those two, if those three cards were together in my hand, then that would actually be able to beat this right here. And then lastly, the stop card here, which you can also play only on its own. As soon as you do that, that hand is over. You are considered to have one, and you will play a new grouping or single card to begin the next hand. And so much later in this hand, we've got this player who led an 11. This player played two eights, and it comes back to this player, and they cannot best two eights. They have to pass. Both of their reserve cards have been drawn. They have to lose a chip, and this hand is over. We can pick up all the cards, and we are going to shuffle up and deal again. Everyone gets 10 and two reserve cards. We continue doing that until one person is fully out of chips, and they need to lose another one. And at that point, everyone with chips is going to be the winner of the game. So there you go. That's the way that the game works. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. So there you go, checkered combos. I really like this game. I think it's a solid, quirky, interesting design, but it is not without its issues. So let's go ahead and dive into what I think of it, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna work through these from the top down using my target audience system. And I'll start with theme because it's the easiest one. There is no theme here whatsoever. So that's neither a negative nor a positive for me. I don't mind something like this, not really having a theme because it does not need one. I don't need one getting in the way when I'm teaching, and I don't need one there to help me teach. So I'm good with it not being anything. The aesthetics. It's not a great look. I don't like the way the cards look. Uh, it's a little garish, but the card quality is good, so that's that's nice. Um, overall, it's kind of a wash for me, you know. Uh, the I appreciate the card quality, I suppose, in a game that's gonna get shuffled a lot and dealt with a lot than I do about the look of the cards necessarily. Uh, replayability, I think, is high in this game. You are going to, each time you are dealt a new hand of cards, have to figure out how to pilot that hand of cards to success. And how you do it, where you remove cards, uh, you know, from where you remove cards, where you add new ones, how you manipulate that is going to be really clever and engaging, and that really is the most interesting part of the game. That twist, that idea of, you cannot move the cards around. You have to contend with them the way they were dealt to you. That's super engaging, and it will lead to a lot of replayability. The game length, I find to be too volatile, unfortunately, and it really is too long. And, uh, you know, having three of these tokens, everyone has three, you need to run out those three and then run out another one, could lead to a ton of hands. Too many, in my opinion, sometimes, and sometimes not. Sometimes you, you play a few hands and you, boom, you got your, your loser, everyone else wins. I wish the scoring was different. I don't like the idea of having to burn someone's tokens away and finally the game's over and you don't even get a winner. I don't necessarily enjoy that, so that's one of the things I, I again, thought was one of the flaws in the game. Uh, if you don't really care about that, then it's not too much of a concern, but it is likely to be a volatile game length. You never really know what's going to happen. Ease of play. The game is tricky, but ultimately the concepts are fairly straightforward and, and uh, novel and engaging. But there are some quirks here as well, which I thought were unfortunate. There's a, there's a section in the rule book that talks about how multiple players may lose tokens at once, and that is if... The final hand, so let's say four players, one of them already has gone out, they have no cards in their hand. If during one play, all three of the players that are left empty their hand, because I play a one, the player next to me plays a, a, a two, three, four, and then the player over there plays a triplet of sixes, let's say, and that's that. those were all the cards in our hand, then we all 
lose one chip. And again, it's one of those things that you have to deal with. Like, oh, by the way, there's this really corner case that you got to watch out for. Now, you could always not teach that. That's fine, you know. But it is quirky. And that's the kind of thing that, unfortunately, something really interesting like this might lead to, you know, uh, bizarre little corner case rules. So, yes, it's a little tricky. Lastly, tactics and strategy, just like replayability. I think there's a lot of uh, interesting choices in this game. I think having a hand, how to manipulate that hand, all of that really is clever, highly tactical, engaging. When you pass and pick up a car, if you don't have to, if you have to, you have to. But sometimes you don't have to, and you do it anyway, because you want that card in your hand. Now, you also just removed one of your, you know, shields, for lack of a better term, so you're more likely to be forced to pass later on and not have one of those that you can pick up. And if you don't, you're done. You lose a chip. Overall, this is a really clever game. And yes, I had some issues with it, right? The look isn't great. It's kind of quirky, a little backwards. Scoring isn't supremely satisfactory. But overall, you know what? This is different. And that's something that is hard to come by when it comes to these little card games. The colors and numbers cards game is what, is what I call them. You've seen them. There's a billion of them. You know, they have cards with colors and numbers. This is one of those. And yeah, you got your special cards as well. But you know what? This is different. This is one of those games that does something different. It's a trick-taking game. But it's different. It's kind of a ladder climbing game. Kind of. But different. So yeah, this gets a thumbs up from me. I, I would say if you're looking for, if you're a gamer who's consumed all sorts of these little games and you want something different, I think you're going to enjoy this one. So this is going to get a seal of approval from me. Checkered combos. I am not brave enough to attempt to say that in German, but you know which game it is now. Thanks for checking this out, everybody. I am Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.